What do you do when you get past one obstacle only to find another bigger one in the way? I remember learning about Lewis and Clark and they were making their way to the Pacific and over a period of two difficult years, they had really battled some serious challenges, but they knew they were close to the end. All, all the advanced info that they had been given led them to believe that once they reached the Continental Divide, they would face about a half day journey, reach the waters of the Columbia, and then just float safely to the Pacific. So Meriwether Lewis left the rest of his party behind to climb the bluffs that would allow him to see the other side, hoping that he would see the waters that would carry them to the Pacific. <sighs> it's going to be so nice. We are so tired. But when he got to the top of the bluffs, what he saw were the Rocky Mountains. What do you do when you think your biggest challenges are behind you, only to find you've just been warming up? The story of Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, better known as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, gives us a powerful reminder of the need to stay spiritually alert, even after a victory. By the time we reach Daniel chapter 3, these guys had already been through a whole lot. First of all, being taken in captive into exile, that itself would have been traumatizing enough, but they had survived that part. And now after Daniel had miraculously been able to tell Nebuchadnezzar his dream and interpret it, which bonus helped them avoid getting ripped apart limb from limb, they were now thriving. They'd been elevated to positions of significant leadership in Babylon. They're all under the age of 20. Daniel is now the ruler of the whole province of Babylon, chief over all the wise men of Babylon. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are over the administration of the province of Babylon, right? Victory achieved. Obstacles have been overcome. Roll credits. You know, a painful story of exile and the shattered dreams of youth have ended with a happily ever after. It's going to be great from here on out. Praise the Lord. Sit back, relax, exhale, and bask in the afterglow of victory. But in the next chapter, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego found themselves facing an even greater challenge. Bow or burn? Either bow to Nebuchadnezzar's 90-foot golden statue or burn in a fiery furnace. In the midst of safety and favor on the other side of a mon monumental victory, it can be easy to let your spiritual guard down, to think it's just a smooth ride from here on out. The tendency after a hard-fought spiritual victory is to exhale, to let your guard down, to assume the worst is behind us. But the story of these three guys shows us that the most challenging tests often come after significant victories. In 1 Peter, we're encouraged to stay alert, watch out, because your adversary, the devil, pr uh, prowls around like a lion seeking someone to devour. You got to remain vigilant in Babylon, even after a victory. We can't afford to live off yesterday's victories and become complacent in our walk with God. The spiritual battles that we face are ongoing. The enemy is always looking for opportunities to strike when we're least expecting it. The life of faithfulness, it's not just a one-time decision. It's a daily commitment to walk with God, not just when the pressure is on. But even when, or especially in those moments when it seems like the pressure is past. And so we say, Lord, yesterday's gone. Today I need you. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Spirit of God, breathe on me. I need you today. Amen.